Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another interview at the Inner Changemaker. We got a changemaker himself. We got a proud Canadian. He's an award-winning serial entrepreneur. I know him from the company Clarity, but when I was doing a little bit of digging, this guy is not joking around. He is five times the founder, two times VC funded, three different exits. He's a speaker. I stole some of my best speaking intros from this guy. Award winning angel investor, Dan Martell. Welcome to the show, brother. Jay, what's up, man? Thanks for having me. It's a real honor. I'm, I'm, I'm always excited for any opportunity to, um, you know, to share some wisdom and lessons learned over the years building companies. Yeah, well, hey, I'm really, really excited to have you here because I know how precious your time is. Um, Dude, I, I just want you to know, I'm going to say, I hate when people say that because our time, it's not about who's more valuable. Okay. Like literally, I, I appreciate it. And, and, and mm. you can say that, but I think people need to stop saying that. I never say, <laughs> I've literally never said to a mentor of mine, I know how valuable your time is. Who fucking cares? Sorry, I'm yeah. going off on the tangent. Yeah, yeah. I apologize, everybody listening. I will give you back your show. <laughs> No, hey, you know what? I mean, we're here. We're we're here to talk about legacy over currency, right? And when when we look at Dan and like the body of work that you're doing and that you're living, it's it's really interesting because I think a lot of people they haven't gotten that perspective of you know selling companies and you know traveling the world with a family and and doing all the crazy things that you're doing. So like, I don't know. How does it feel? I know we we kind of had a, a little bit of a interesting conversation around like intros, but when people introduce you as like a serial entrepreneur and like, you know, like you've sold three different companies, you've had all those reference points, like how does that success hit you? I mean, I, I will never forget that I grew up in, and this is like small town, hundred and some thousand people, Eastern Canada, the middle literally of, of butt fuck nowheres. I call it the top hat of Maine. And I am ridiculously proud if you see on all my social profiles, if you ever meet me in person within the first 10 seconds, I will tell you I'm Canadian. Yeah. I, I'm very proud of where I grew up and where I lived. But, you know, I don't forget that like I, I'm in awe still today, like, my friends, their companies, the things they do, the opportunities. I mean, I had Mark Cuban invest in my last company. My dad thought I was lying. Literally, mm. it wasn't until the newspaper printed it. He was like, <laughs> my dad was like, yeah, yeah, sure, dad. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was like, no, dad, seriously, I just, I just raised a round of funding and Mark Cuban's invested. He's like, yeah, you know. Yeah. And I was like, it wasn't until he called me because they announced it in the, in the, and he didn't even believe like the US stuff because he doesn't know it. it was the Canadian Financial Post wrote it. And then he's like, oh my gosh, Dan, that was real. I was like, yeah, I don't lie. Yeah. And uh, so I don't, I don't, you know, spending a week with Richard Branson, getting that email, I thought it was an April Fool's joke. Um, cause I was like, why would he want me out of the fucking millions of people he could spend time with? Sure. And it just was a moment in time. The fact that I was working on clarity, a person I knew that I hadn't seen in four years felt like I was the right person to bring together. And, uh, it wasn't until I saw him walk down, you know, we were at his house in Switzerland, which was essentially a 16 bedroom chalet with like a full-time staff and a masseuse. Uh, I, it took until I saw him physically walk out of the stairway into the living room that I was like, oh shit, this is really happening. So I, I'm still in, you know, at one part I've got ambitions to do even more at the same time. I feel super privileged and lucky and I don't take it for granted for one second. Mm. Do you, do you think that as you were growing up, I, I heard just a little bit of like your story. Um, but like, like, were you always like, would you say had some of these attributes of being an entrepreneur, being a serial entrepreneur, kind of going and building projects, like as, as you were growing up, like, were you a little bit like that? I, I know you, you, you said you, you're a bit of a troublemaker. That, I mean, uh, this is the thing. I believe that most entrepreneurs, not all, but like 70%, and I've pulled them, you know, okay. in their life, yeah, I yeah. say, how many of you have gone through a chaotic experience between the ages of nine and 13 years old? 70% of the room's hands go right. up. They know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's everything from, you know, the, the kid from Iran that made the leap with a fake passport to, you know, growing up and their mom died to whatever it is. And the reason for me, and this is the way I look at it, and I've got my story, is that, that you learn at a young age to deal with uncertainty, that chaos is okay. And if you're an entrepreneur, if you know how to deal with that, really entrepreneurship is the only place that you'll be able to thrive 
because mm. in any normal environment, like I can't get a job. You imagine <laughs> me as an employee, I'd be arguing with my boss. I'd be fired in 10 seconds. Like it's just, there's for certain people. So was I an entrepreneur? Well, I guess if you consider selling drugs, I mean, I literally, um, there's nothing anybody watching this. Well, maybe for some people, I, I grew up in a very challenging environment and at 17, mm. I, I went to kill myself. I had a gun with me. I crashed into a house. I went to pull the gun on the police. I was in a high-speed chase. I was in a stolen car. Um, and somehow the gun got stuck in the bag and I couldn't get it out. And the cops grabbed me and, you know, my feet didn't touch the ground. I woke up sober the next day in a jail cell and I just realized somebody was looking out for me. Mm. And, uh, it took, it took a lot of work from that point. I ended up in jail for a while five months in a guard grabbed me, sat me down, looked me in the eye and told me he believed in me. And that shifted everything. And, you know, when I look at the business stuff, that's cool. But for me, what I try to do every day is, is try to find other, you know, the guard's name was Brian. And I just try to find other opportunities for me to, to talk with an entrepreneur, a young adult. Uh, you know, I spend a lot of time with at risk youth mm. and just shed some of that belief in their possibility because it's true man i fucking i'm like the biggest entrepreneur fan in the world because i know what's possible when people believe in you more than you believe in yourself mm -hmm. and it's easy to look at all the challenges and the limitations and the the lack of resources that's the easy part but what's funner and more energetic and exciting is actually looking at the possibility and if if my role in a moment is to extend that to somebody else that doesn't have it for them then bring it Mm. And I, you know, and that's, that's the message that I would love to, to, to communicate and really that all greatness is on the other side of fear, right? It's like that mm -hmm. you need the person, everybody, when I ask you, you know, anybody, what was, who's that person that believed in you that you can all say, it could be my mom, it could be my uncle. It was my neighbor. It was yeah. the, my best friend in college or whatever it is, but we can all point to a person. And for me, it was a guy named Brian and my life shifted. I mean, I ended up just, you know, ended up in rehab therapy right after that. I got released early to go to a therapeutic community for 11 months. At the end of that term, I discovered programming and that became my new addiction. And that's, that's how I got into building technology companies, mm. which is crazy. I mean, crazy that I had any success, let alone, you know, build two venture back companies out of San Francisco. And you're really young even back then. I'm 37. I mean, I started, I just started you, when you I was You look good, young. man. You look good, Thanks. man. Hey, man. Yeah. You know how to get the points. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate that, Jay. Um, no, I started when I was 17. So I just got, I, my first two companies are complete failures, right? And when people say like, how many companies have you started? Five yeah. corporations, but 20 plus projects. You know what I mean? Like I'm right. a tinker. I'm a tool builder. I like to test and try to solve my own problems and see if there's a market for it. But, you know, those are the five that like I actually like incorporated and pushed and put some money into and tried to make a go at it. It literally took me from 17 to 24 to finally figure it out, which is, you know, seven years. Most people, they're like 16 months in and they're like, oh, this is not working. I'm going to stop. It's like, fuck off. I don't know. I just, I just think people underestimate how much time, you know, you can't, you can't cook a, you can't put a cake in the oven and double the heat and think you're going to burn the fucking cake. Yeah. It yeah, takes yeah, yeah, yeah. time. And it's going to suck. You're not going to get to have the cake. It just, there's just, the, the recipe of success is time. And I think that mm. some people are impatient. I love impatience. I'm, I'm super impatient, but I'm also uh, focused on the big outcome and I'm willing to put in the time. So yeah, I, I, I've had a lot of success. I think I started super early and um, I always tried to learn from every opportunity, every mistake. I've always had great mentors, well not always, but when I got great mentors, um, I learned from their mistakes and you know, I fed my mind and I did a lot of stuff that I think a lot of people do watching. The difference with me, it's JFDI. JFDI. JFDI, man, that's everything. It is on my license plate. It is on my Facebook page. It is my everything. It's just fucking do it. If ah. you tell me something yeah, yeah, yeah. that I'm like, that makes a lot of sense. I don't second guess it. I don't sleep on it. I take action mm. right now in the moment, in the excitement. Do it. I always tell people, I, I get on calls with entrepreneurs. I say, before we get going, I want you to block out 10 minutes after this call. Because I guarantee and write it down. You get your little journal. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to be inspired and it's not enough to write it down. I want you to do something to move that boulder up the mountain as mm. soon as we're done with the call. And that is, that's my default state. 
yeah. I kind of have a very small knowing doing gap. If I yeah. know that it's the right move and it speaks to my soul, take action. So, I mean, Dan, I mean, I, I think that's really great. And, you know, maybe this is kind of like a, a couple questions, two part question here. I mean, one, do you think that when you were growing up, you were like, like you had a little bit of that, right? You're, you know, maybe you're just channeling your energy differently, you know, in oh, yeah. terms of I, execution. Kid, I mean, I'll tell you what, it, what's happened is, you know, I have attention deficit disorder, ADHD, the hyperactive time. Okay. For my teenage years, I thought I was broken, right? I got diagnosed when I was 11, put on Ritalin, thought I was broken, you know, acted mm. out anger issues, had that internal kind yeah. of rage. And what happens is the, the rage is still in there. Like I'm still like, I mean, not that I'm an angry person. If you've ever met me or seen me, I'm like, I'm a super positive, happy person. Yeah. But a couple times in the last decade, that may have come out in a certain scenario. And it's scary for the person and it's scary for me. Like, okay. you know what I mean? It's, it's one of yeah, those yeah, things. Yeah. It's very primitive. What's happened is that, that, um, that, that, that anger has just transformed into a different type of engine, right? And that's mm. where my passion and excitement and execution for life comes out of play. And instead of tapping it, I used to take Ritalin even as an adult and Adderall. Um, I just decided to stop. And, you know, I, I truly, it's my superpower. It's why I'm standing up right now. It's why I do my best work in airports. It's why I have a great team of people around me that keep me focused and, and, and yeah, on the yeah, right yeah. task. And, you know, I've just, I've just learned to really tap it uh, in a way that's super productive. Mm. And uh, it's something you have to learn. I read a great book called Driven from Distraction. And uh, that book gave me the game plan to be able to harness my superpower. Yeah. And, and you know what, what's really evident, even just, you know, just being in this conversation with you the last, you know, 10, 15 minutes is you're, I think you, you got to a level where you're super aware of your own gifts, right? And what you could bring to the table. And you, you, you became just aware of what you could do, what you could not do. Right. Um, so for maybe people that are listening to this and they're hearing you, they're like, you know what? I want to go do it. I want to go be like Dan. I mean, that's exciting. Right. But what if like they, they need a little more information? There's other people out there that, you know, they're, they're maybe a little more systems oriented or maybe they just need a little more before they kind of take that leap. Like, I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a systems nerd. Like I literally uh, yeah, yeah. will. <laughs> yeah. Ra circles around anybody that thinks are system oriented. So I get sure. that. Yeah. What's the question? Well, like, yeah. like what, what, well, I'm just saying, like, what do people, because, like, when I hear that, I go, hey, I, I totally feel you. You know, like, I'm going to go do it. I got the idea. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe Dan gave me a couple pointers here. I'm going to go implement. I'm going to go make this happen, right? But I know other entrepreneurs out there, other people, they want to go make it happen. But there's yeah, just like so that, I'll, I'll give them the threshold. logic side of their brain because I just right. think they're making decisions from the wrong side. Here's, here's what you need to do is you need to pick new heroes, okay? Mm. And you need to stop turn into people like your parents. I'll tell you why. And this is the big thing is if you have any aspiration whatsoever to achieve a life or more success than your parents, which I would say every kid probably has that aspiration, yeah. unless your dad, Steve Jobs or Bill Gates, even still, maybe you're aiming for the stars. Yeah. Um, then the last person you want to turn to when you've got big life decisions to make is your parents. Because if you go to them for those big decisions, should I move? Should I go to university? Should I buy a house? Should I marry this woman? Yeah. Should I start a company? Then they'll give you the advice that they would have taken and you'll get the life that they've got. And that's why 80% of the world's walking around with the same life as their parents, if not worse, because they deferred those mm. big life decisions. So that is, hopefully you can't argue with that, you systems thinkers out there. That is not a, an emotional thing. That's a logical thing. Big decisions wrong person to turn advice. What I want you to do is choose new heroes to model after. And instead of being fearful, start asking yourself, what would my heroes be proud of me for making decisions around? Mm. And if you start thinking like, if you, if you look up to an Elon Musk, right? Or Steve Jobs, when I was building clarity and I was designing product, I used to think to myself all the time, would Steve be impressed with my designs? Not me, my team, my customers, Steve effing Jobs, the, 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 the most maniacal, pixel-perfect design, you know, and that was the basis of that, those decisions. Or, mm. you know, when it comes to the economics of it is would Warren Buffett invest in that opportunity? Would he be impressed with my business acumen? And I just think that, you know, everybody has the opportunity, even if you don't know these people, you can learn about them and you can start using them as a filter for making your decisions and 
hopefully you can kind of see the logic that making decisions based on those filters is going to generate a life that looks a lot more like theirs than your parents. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And in and, and a lot of ways, you essentially, you kind of become your heroes, right? You become a hero for someone else, right? Well, that, and, I mean, that's just the, the beautiful part of life is that every generation's responsibility is to uplift the next generation, right? I mean, mm. if you think about everything that we've got in front of us from the, the Skype to the internet to, you know, it's, warm it's homes to everything, it's, it's we didn't have to start from scratch. We got to build on top of. And, and every new innovation unlocks a next set of challenges for the next generation. So um, I think it's everybody's responsible. If you have any level of success to throw the elevator back down and support the next group of people up. Mm, for sure, for sure. And let me, let me ask you this, Dan. I mean, what do you think in this world of social? I, I know, by the way, if you guys are watching this and you guys are listening, you guys like what Dan Martell is throwing down. Make sure to follow this guy, specifically on YouTube. Uh, I love, I, I love watching all your stuff on, on, on YouTube, on, on Twitter. He's Dan Martell. Um, because you know, he's, he's keeping it real. But I'm really curious because I know you're really heavy on the social media. Um, what do you think about like entrepreneurship in like the social media world now where everybody's, you know, like trying to do, do you know what I mean? Like everybody's like trying to post pictures of them, like, like hustling, like your vantage point is that you've sold like three companies by the time I think it was like, um, how, how old were you when, when 30, you sold? I think with the, the, the third, I was 32 when yeah, 30, I sold. So, so 33, like, or, no, 34, 34, sorry. It was, it was three companies in 10 years. Yeah. So, I mean, from that vantage point of someone like you've done it, right? And now you're kind of just sharing some lessons. Um, I was sharing lessons since my first, I exited my first business. You yeah. know what I mean? So like, I, you know, here's the deal is that it's easy to look at some of these people that are like trying to be Instagram famous and all this stuff. And they've literally Dude. done nothing other than build their social media accounts and dismiss them. But the truth is, you know, and we all know the guy with the, the here in my garage and you're like some people, it's like, go learn what they're doing. If they're, if they're having success and yeah. your goal is to promote a message or get your business known and they're able to succeed in a space, there's some stuff to learn. Like, don't be ignorant to that just because you're biased towards their, their, um, content. Here's what I will say. What's changed since I started being an entrepreneur, you know, back in the day is that entrepreneurship is actually cool. And a lot of the new millennials, they don't yeah. realize that, you know, 15 years ago, being an entrepreneur was you're an idiot. <laughs> like literally you don't, you're, being an entrepreneur meant you were not useful and you, you went and did stuff. Like you had a, a lawn mowing company or a garden company. Like it wasn't a thing that people now aspire to. The movie, The Social Network, you know, started showing people what was possible from a technology. I mean, it literally was in the last you know, 10 years, pretty much, you know, the dot-com bus, if you were doing tech entrepreneurship in 2001, you were an idiot, right? <laughs> now you're the cool kid on the block. So yeah. I would just say, you know, it might, it, and it's, it's always cyclical. So that's, yeah. you know, it's cool. It's cool. Now it's not, So you're either, you're either part of that and it's who your DNA. I always love downturns in markets, not because I want people to lose their money. It's, it clears out all the fucking entrepreneurs. It literally mm. gets rid of all these people that say, I want to be an entrepreneur. It's like, I mean, my biggest problem is these tech accelerators. Okay. So okay. T tell hey, us about that. What, what, what do you mean? Oh, my problem is these, <laughs> these, these people that think they're entrepreneurs only decided to quit their jobs, making 150 grand a year because they got paid 250,000 to get into an accelerator to go work on their idea. Right. And they call themselves entrepreneurs. Right, right, right. I mean, <laughs> anybody's built anything from nothing knows that there's a different level of hustle required to risk it all versus leaving yeah. your job making 150 grand a year at Google to joining a Y Combinator and get 250, $500,000 to, I mean, come on. <laughs> and then they wonder why when it doesn't work out, it's hard. It's like, you just don't got it. So that's, you know, I just think that people want it to be easy and my whole thing is I, I want to become the person who can deal. I don't care about, mm. I don't want to not have problems. Bring on the challenges because it's in those moments that I look inside and say, all right, Dan, it's one of those times to grow. And if you grow, you win. And if you don't, you fucking learn. But like that's, that is what problems, you know, people, I remember Oprah Winfrey. I mean, this is, you know, I'm quoting Oprah Winfrey. I might quote yeah. Dr. Phil soon too. 
if you don't watch out. But this, this is that type of interview. That's <laughs> just one of those where we're going. Yeah. Oprah um, was being sued for her her mad cow thing back in the day. A lot of people remember it's like in the eighties, and uh, she's being sued for a billion dollars. And somebody said, like, doesn't it stress you out that you're being sued for a billion dollars? And she said, I feel blessed to be the kind of person that could be sued for a billion dollars. It's, uh, I, I think it just, it's, I love the reframe, right? And, and, and it's being, it's constantly like, it's, it's actually starting to appreciate, you know, the actual problems you have. Um, I, I remember this is a long, this interview happened a long time ago, uh, but you probably know, uh, Tucker, Tucker Max. Yeah, for uh, sure. He, he was on the show and he, he shared something very similar. He said, you know, people that want, um, there's a lot of people out there that want, a certain identity without risking it, right? And we're talking about like writers and, and creators, but the same thing applies for entrepreneurship and people that want like a certain title. I like that. And Tucker, you know, you know it's, it's really that whole thing that if you want to be a great writer, you got to live an interesting life, right? Yeah. You know, if you want to build a great <laughs> company, you need to be willing to take risks. Like those two things are part of the same path. Mm. And, um, that, I guess that's that's my only thing, and 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 it's not, it's not a judgment call because I really believe everybody's on their own journey, and I just honor the, I honor anybody that wakes up every day and creates. You know, if you if you're the type of person that you create art, you create anything, you create a movement, you create a, a play, because if you put that out there to the world to be judged, then you yeah. you're you're you and I are on the same thinking level, right? Because eighty percent right. of the population wouldn't even they won't even speak up in a meeting. Mm. let alone create something for the rest of the world to judge. And entrepreneurs in their own right are special. And obviously I'm self, you know, it's a little self-serving, but you know, <laughs> every day they get up to create a better world for the rest of the world to live in. And I don't care if it's a car wash person or a lawn mowing or sure. you know, a propane company, they create value in our lives. And every day they created that mm. company and decide to serve. And I just think it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. And people, entrepreneurs out there need to celebrate what they're doing. Because it's it's special. They're creating a better world for the rest of the people to live in, and it doesn't matter what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I hope the changemaker community sees why I had to have Dan Martell on the show. Um, but really curious, like, why do why do you think a lot of people don't speak up or a lot of people don't create? Right. I'm not saying everybody needs to, um, but at the same notion, like, why is it that most people won't? I think I think it's it's always the dance with fear, right? Seth Godin mm. talk, does he probably does the best job about talking about it in the ex explanation. I really think everybody should create personally. You don't yeah. all have to be entrepreneurs, but you should okay. all yeah. practice writing. I mean, just the act of writing a blog post That's true. and hitting publish would yeah. be magical for a lot of people, right? My favorite thing is I get people to create videos, right? Yeah. Like pull out their phone and do and a just video. Start doing it's like, it. Boom, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. Go. And they're like, oh, what? <laughs> But I'll tell you, man, the sense of power, the sense of confidence, the sense of, yeah, I fucking did it in the face of fear after they publish. And there's always mm. kind of like three levels of badassery. It's like, you know, in, in a private group is like low level, you know, <laughs> on your Facebook is another one, you know, publish your friends or then public. Um, and I, I just I just think that um, the reason why anybody, for the most part, people, it's always fear. But the challenge is, is that it's not based on anything real. So that's one, yeah. right? Um, and I understand it because it's what allowed us to be alive as a species, right? 50,000 years ago, it allowed us to not get eaten by a lion. And the other challenge is that fear is 20 times more powerful than aspiration or, or want or, you know, uh, excitement. Like it's, mm. you know, fear is 20 times hard. Like, so if you want to overcome something, you need to have a drive and a vision. That's why, you know, People are, I'm going to, I'm going to share with your community. There's like, there's three core things you need to get right. It's how you start your day. It's got to be a practice and it's got to be improved upon, you know, mindset, eating healthy, all that stuff. Right. You got to feed your brain. You got to read incredible content yeah. and you got to do a friend inventory. You need to edit some people out of your life and <laughs> don't tell me, well, what if it's my wife and my mom and my brother? It's like, look, um, you can love your family. It doesn't mean you need to spend every day and weekend with them. That's what holidays are for. Mm. Would you so, say? Would, would you say you're pretty ruthless with I'm with, crazy with that? Ruthless. Yeah, yeah. I, I literally every day when it r reminds me on Facebook birthdays, I love it because I'll go through and I'll unfriend. For somehow I got connected early days of Facebook with people that I would probably 
you know, my, my filter is, would I try to avoid you at the mall? If I saw you walking this way and I was like, I know that person, would I stop and engage you or would I pretend like I don't see you? If I pretend like I don't see you, I unfriend you on Facebook. That's a great filter, actually. Yeah, I mean, look, people come into your life for one of three, you know, three areas, a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Yeah. Just because we ended up living in the same geographical location and in the same school together um, does not mean that we need to be friends on Facebook and I need to consume your rants on whatever political, business, news, blah, 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 philosophy. We don't share the same value. Yeah. That's cool. Go be with your people. It's not a bad thing. It's not a judgment thing. It's not a hierarchy thing. It's just literally I want to be around people that inspire me, that challenge me, that educate me. And if you're not doing that, yeah. then go do your own thing somewhere else. And when you're ready, come back and find me. Like, that's the cool part. Like, mm. I, I had a woman today, she like replied to my email and she's like, your reputation would be so much more appreciated if you didn't swear in your emails and take the, what did she call it? The Lord's name in vain or something like that. <laughs> and I, I just couldn't help it, man. I replied and said, fuck that shit. It's not me. Ain't gonna happen. Click subscribe or stick around for the show. Yeah. But I'm just, I'm not not gonna <laughs> be me because it hurts your feelings. Yeah. And I'm not going to stop you. For, and, and I normally in the past, I would have unsubscribed her, but I don't anymore. You give them the choice. I let them make the decision. Mm. I used to unsubscribe them because I'm like, get out of here. Yeah. But now I'm more like, you know what? I think that I probably triggered something in them. And if they're a little curious, it might open up a new opportunity for their I mean, intelligence is really one thing, being able to hold two opposing thoughts in your brain at the exact same time. If my email and using the word fuck or shit offends her, then she really needs some deep, you know, and if yeah. that happens to be me to teach it, cool, I'll keep her on my email list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's why we wanted to have you on the show, and that's why you, you keep it so real you know, with, with all the, the context and the reference points that you have. So I really appreciate that. Like for the people that are listening to this or they're watching this and they themselves, you know, you're probably a really great person to ask, right? Because they themselves, they want to start businesses. Maybe they're trying to, you know, look at, you know, their life. It seems to, to me, and maybe this is not true. You can enlighten us. Um, like you started a lot of these businesses because like you had a certain pain point or you found a certain pain point that you kind of built around. Do you think that that's, you know, a, a really great way of going about it. Like how, for it, people it's, that are just... it's, it's a great way. It's not a reason not to start. So, mm. right. It's a great reason. It's yeah. fun. It's more exciting. But if that wasn't true, it wouldn't mean like if you said yeah. you could only start a business to solve a problem you could have or else I would be like, all right, what's the other idea? Like, yeah. I'm okay. I just, <laughs> to me, it's the act of creating, right? Mm. It's the act of controlling your own destiny. So that stuff is more for me, the motivation, the bonus is solving problems I have for people I care about. Right. But I will say the number one thing people need to understand is that they don't need to figure out the grand scheme of things today. They need to figure out how to go from zero to one, one to 10 and 10 to a hundred. Mm. So don't, especially you system nerds watching or listening um, you want it all laid out and, da, 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 and if I do this and, and, and that's why it'll never work because you want certainty and certainty is not present in entrepreneurship. But what I can give you focus on is go find one customer. And once you get that customer paying you for whatever thing you want to sell them, mm. then go try five ten. And you know what? Call it a project, not a business. And don't be uh, hard on yourself if it doesn't work out. It's not mm. supposed to work out. The odds are against you from day one. What I want you to do is celebrate the journey because I really think we need to set goals that are way past our possibility of, of accomplishment in our lifetime because, you know, most people, they actually end up at the mountaintop and as soon as they're there, they start looking at the next mountaintop. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you know that, then why don't you set a vision for your life and what's possible that's never achievable? I'd, I'd love to meet somebody. It's like my mission in life is to fly. <laughs> cool. <laughs> it's like, and I'm okay if yeah. I never achieve it, but every day I wake up and I try to move that rock up the bowl, the, the, the hill. And you know what? It just happens. I started a spacesuit company and because you know what I mean? They'd like done all these things on that journey, but I, I just think it's a lot more fun. And, and, and you know, you hear it all the time, but the truth is, is the journey is the destination, man. Holy, like if I could go back and say like, you know, whisper in my ear as a early days of an entrepreneur, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would want to whisper that. 
to en- right? enjoy everything. Oh, yeah. People think like, oh, my God, Dan, you sold your companies. How, how did it feel? Right. It was kind of depressing, man. I fucking like the the funnest parts was the gritty, the creative, the constraints, the challenges, the grind, the you know, I remember one time one of my employees um, got busted on on a major company's network talking about their weekend and saying some very inappropriate stuff about their boss. And they worked for me and they got fired and I was getting sued and I had to get a suit on. I'm 25, 26 years old and jump on a plane and go to New Jersey. It was like a Sunday I got the voicemail and I was on the plane Monday morning and I was there before they showed up because there's an hour time difference. Yeah. And um, that was, that'll go down in my business career is one of the most craziest fucked up shit things i've ever had to deal with that i wouldn't change for a moment and it, and it makes great stories right and it's I mean, all- you can't have a great story without the shit like the stories <laughs> are great because they have a, a there's a transformation like if you never i'm just gonna ruin every movie for everybody right now oh god every movie follows this pattern key characters here yeah he goes through a challenge he learns about himself and he ends up here every movie mm-hmm. it's what it's it's what we're programmed to look for because we're programmed to grow. And what we're doing in those moments is we're learning about opportunity to grow and transformation. And when we're watching a movie, Luke Skywalker, we're not actually watching the movie. We're putting ourselves in that position and we're asking ourselves, when you saw me speak at Archangel Summit, you know, people, what I try to do when I speak is I create the space for the audience to insert themselves into the story. Mm. I wasn't, yes, you were listening to my story, but I was trying yeah. to get you to reflect on your truth and, and position and who believed in me and who have I done that for other people. And that, that's, that to me is the point of, if you get on a stage, I just want to say this to everybody listening. If you ever have the opportunity, the privilege to get on a stage, if your mission in that moment is anything less than to change lives, get the fuck off the stage and give it to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Cause that is. Now, I don't get on this podcast without that mission. That is my purpose. One person. Every time I do a YouTube video, one person. Mm. But that's the intention because I think that it's a true honor to get anybody second of their life. Mm. And, and if you can help them through your stories, through that transformation. I think it's, it's, our, it's our mandate. It's, what, it's, our, or it's our commitment. You know, Dan, Dan is dropping some fire, some heat over here and he's, he's keeping real. And I, and I love that. Um, how, Dan, how do you keep, like, how do you have such a big vision? But then when you're creating content and when you're speaking on stage, you, you can remind yourself and you can be present in those moments and you don't get lost. You know how sometimes like, like I, I, for me, like as an entrepreneur and I'm just, you know, I'm a couple years in, uh, you know, we're building this amazing community. Like, you know, we, sometimes we set these like large ambitious goals and like, I think conceptually people can understand that they're like, okay, I got to think bigger, you know, maybe sometimes adding a couple of zeros and, and just trying to think about a bigger impact. But how do you like, how do you go from that to, I'm going to be present and just try to change one person's life? I, just, you know I, I, mean? I literally tell myself that. Okay. One person, one person, one person, one person. I get in front of the camera with my, my buddy Jarrett. And we're doing videos, my weekly YouTube video. Yeah, yeah. One person. I'm talking to that. I'm looking in the camera right there. One person. You. And you feel me. And I'm like, I'm so present with that person. I'm not thinking about what I'm going to have for lunch. I'm not thinking about anything else. I really want to connect at that level. And it's not something that comes naturally. It's weird as shit to look at a camera. It's awkward. I spent months. Literally, I actually emailed my videographer, Jared, and I said, hey, send me a clip of all my shitty shit videos. I want to post something. I want to remind <laughs> you, it's a skill. I mean, literally, yeah. it's like, how do you become a better speaker? Always say yes and be okay getting up there and totally bombing. Mm. You know? I, I, get a, I get a birthmark. I don't know if you can see it, but I have a birthmark in my neck that sometimes yeah, yeah. it's really red. And I've had people um, in a video comments going, did you cut yourself shaving? I know this about me. It's been there since I was a kid. Yeah. And I could easily say, well, I'm not getting in front of a camera because it's going to happen because obviously it's, it's when I get nervous or excited or whatever. And, uh, I remember the first time that, you know, I saw the video, I was like, shit, it's red. And I'm like, am I going to publish it? It's fucking right. I'm going to publish. Go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't hold back. Like you, you, you can't self edit. And it's just, you know, I'd love to say that it's something that you can learn and you can by just slowly every day taking. That's why I think the morning is so important. If you hit snooze, you don't get it. Mm. You, n- nobody should hit snooze 
like if you told me you hit snooze, I would take your phone from you. I would bust your alarm clock. I would put you in a headlock in the most caring and loving way possible. <laughs> I'm not going to allow anybody to hit snooze on themselves. That's mm. just the craziest thing in the world. And that, um, that all falls back to just some of the challenges I went through as a kid and, and what I had to overcome. And uh, it's made me who I am today. And I wouldn't change one grain of, of sand in that moment. Um, you know, I tell my mom every day how blessed I feel and lucky that she's my mom. You know, she's an alcoholic, to, you know, she, she put us through hell, but I wouldn't be the person I am today without her. Mm. And I, and I don't mean that in like a, a, like to make it okay kind of way. I, I literally mean it that I needed her to be the woman that I, she wasn't the woman I thought I wanted her to be, but I wouldn't be the man that I, I appreciate today. You know mm. what I mean? So I wouldn't change that yeah. in a, any shape or form. I mean, that's, that's really powerful because I, 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 you know, I think for a lot of people and also myself personally, it's like you try to control, you know, how certain people in your life need to be for you. You know, you try to like, and, 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 you know, maybe it's just a, a young person thing or you kind of go through that, but, um, it's, it's just really awesome to hear, you know, you're talking about accepting and you're talking about look everybody's living in their own world like if yeah. you the sooner you understand that everybody's playing this movie called me inc in their mm. mind yeah, like yeah. literally i mean you're driving and you think people are looking at you driving in your car nobody's fucking paying attention to you they're thinking about their own little movie yeah it's like once you realize that everybody's got their own shit they've gone through their own journey they got a different lens on life and all you can do is be you like literally be you the the most unique and amazing and incredible thing you can do with your life is let you shine, period. Mm. Isn't that crazy, man? The, the most creative, incredible, inspiring, motivating thing you can do. Everybody listening, the most important thing you can do is just be you. Not the filtered, edited version that you think you want to be. You at your no. core. Because that, it's just we're, 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 we're as humans, we're, we can't control the fact that we resonate with that. That is what makes us tribes. It's biological. It's what's inspiring when we see somebody really just do the craziest things, but it's because they're being them. They're dancing like literally nobody's watching, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. so inspiring because you can't even believe they're doing it. And, 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 and they're just, exp I just think that that is, is, you know, if I could learn that, you know, a few years yeah. earlier, I think that would have been pretty powerful. Hey, hey, out of curiosity, because like I, I create content like I'm, you know, we're, we're, we're having this amazing podcast and this is maybe just a bit selfish, but I think for a lot of content creators, sometimes you just have certain days. I know, I know you're like the king of productivity and like we're, we're chatting about some things like, you know, outside of the conversation because I know you're really, really consistent, right? And you're playing the long game and, and, and you're doing all these things, but like on the days that, you know, people say like the don't want to create or maybe like they're not in the mood to create or maybe they're just not whatever in, in that zone right like how, how do you deal with that like how do you i think i think it, it, people people need to understand is that no matter what you do in your life you know yeah. i do crossfit right okay yeah um i create content i build companies i i, I coach high performing SaaS entrepreneurs software entrepreneurs yeah and everything i do that's super important like these specific outcomes that i want to achieve um i there's there's a prep phase to it. Okay. So I don't just like, I wouldn't, if you like, Oh, we're doing CrossFit workout. I wouldn't turn around and do a CrossFit workout right now. <laughs> right. I would have to do very specific set of stretches to get my knees and my mobility, et cetera, in a position so that I could be good. At. I could do it. It would probably, uh, increase my potential for injury and wouldn't be very fun for me. Right. Mm. Video and content's the same thing. If you don't have a routine, a practice that you go through to remind yourself, to prep you, to go through the content, to remind yourself of the one person, to look at your achievement list, to think about your mission on why you're creating these videos in the first place, right? And it's not mm. to, you know, brand your personal stuff and feed your ego, but right, really right. to come from a place of service. If you can, if you can revive, I mean, just one thing that my team does for me is all of the kind things that people have ever emailed, written, or said about me, they've got it in one place. If you can remind yourself of the impact that you're having, how could you not create great content mm. if you did that every time? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care if you just got kicked in the nuts. Like <laughs> if you went through that process, 
and you're like, man, I've really, you know, even if it's a thousand people have watched your videos, like yeah. people think they're like, what? Are, I, go look at my comments. Some people are like, why doesn't this channel have like a million subscribers? Yeah. Hey, I agree. I would love for that to happen. My shit is a little bit more business strategic heady. It's not, you mm -hmm. know, it's not, you know, fluffy teen bopper, 13 year olds running around doing, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit more advanced. You're not pulling pranks on anybody. No. <laughs> but at the same time, I am not going to look the fact that almost a million people, people, fucking humans on the other side of those, those computers took the time to watch a video. Mm. That's for real. I think people are dicks about, oh, I only got a thousand subscribers. Like, you get a thousand people? A thousand people. Imagine if a thousand people came around <laughs> you right now. How crazy is that? It would yeah. fill up like, it would fill up a kilometer radius around me. And I'm like, ooh, there's not enough people. That's crazy talk, man. That's so weird. Mm. So that's how I get inspired to create content. I, I love it. I love it. I'm I'm gonna definitely have more of that routine. And it totally makes sense, right? It just puts you in the right state of mind and then you know, you you're you're there. Like you can you you understand why you're doing it. So um Dan, I wanna switch gears on you a little bit. Just a couple last questions here. Um, and I, I mean, I think you've just given us so many tangible, actionable things to just really think about inspired me to, you know, maybe even get on the camera after this. Maybe I got to go on my own routine. Hey man, JFDI style. Why not? Yeah. You never know. So, you know, the, the show itself, the, the theme, we always discuss legacy over currency. You know, I, I know you're on a mission to impact. I think you told me a hundred million people at risk, youth. at risk youth around the world. And uh, I asked you why, why, why you picked that number. And you're like, well, it's just something I thought it was so impossible to achieve. Yeah, but hey, I mean, you know, like you're. Yeah, I'm literally it. started and I'm like, oh shit, maybe that was a small, like I, I you know, I don't, the, the hardest part is at risk youth is that they're not looking for help. Okay. And like, people don't understand. The reason why I picked that is they're usually, you know, not on the internet. They're yeah. dealing with challenges, socioeconomic challenges. So it's, it's just even getting in front of them has actually been super challenging, but I've, I've started already. Mm. Um. But yeah, the question is. Yeah, so we all the things you're doing now, how does that tie into your viewpoint of of your legacy of Dan's legacy? Well, see, the cool part is is that um, the ability for me to produce content helps those kids. So, so I, I actually have a program uh, that I put together. So, if you know any groups of at-risk youth, you know it could be like mm. a local youth program or crisis centers or whatever. Just send them my way, and I'll plug them in. Yeah. But um, I had to learn how to teach, man. I had to learn how to coach. I had to learn how to communicate. I had to to codify some of these beliefs. I mean, this interview wouldn't be the same interview if I didn't create all those YouTube videos. So it was almost like I needed to practice. I wanted to communicate through video. I chose that specifically because I wanted people to see my eyes. Obviously, in person would be even better. I don't want to travel so much because I have two little boys and I'm committed to being present for them. Um, so when I do get the opportunities, uh, I, I, you know, it's it's I take the moment to be real and really communicate, connect, and then try to get that video out there. So like, um, I just I started doing the video side to serve the business community and really for my two boys. But the, the byproduct of that, it's, it's given me the platform and the brand recognition and the email list to serve the at-risk youth. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like in some way, it's like Robin from Peter, the business entrepreneurs out there, uh, to pay Paul the, uh, uh, the at-risk youth that really need me the most. Mm. Cause there's no, there's no, like, not that I need a market, but if you want to, if you want to reach a, a million of those, what's the platform? Who am I? You know what I mean? Like, how do I get, how do I get in front of those organizations with credibility, blah, 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 if I don't have, you know, the, 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 um, the talent, right. you know, and I want to, I want to make sure that I deliver. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. and, 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 it's, and it's a powerful, I think it's just, it's just powerful, you know, just being in this conversation with you, having you share all this, right? So people that are watching this, listening to this, I mean, make sure to go follow this guy on YouTube. Make sure to go to danmartel.com and check. He's, he's got some really interesting videos. I actually put something special for you together. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. So if everybody goes to danmartel, 2 slash productive, I-V-E. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you guys, I, I put together an ebook. It's five of my, people always ask like, how do you stay, mo I mean, in some of the stuff you've asked, yeah. I'll give you the specific things I do, what I drink, uh, not like alcohol, but like <laughs> green juice. I talk about my five productivity hats. 
and really the mindset shifts that I use to stay um, motivated. So if you go to dammartel.com, 2Ls Martel, forward slash productive, um, download that, that'll get you started. And then you can just email, like I actually get my emails. I do have yeah. an assistant that processes 95% yeah, yeah, yeah. of everything. But if you reply to my newsletter, that comes to me. We're talking, <laughs> we're exchanging, and I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, no, and 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 that's really cool because you get to, you know, now you saw a little bit of what's happening with Dan and how he's able to kind of have this level of energy and be in this state. And so you could, if you want to tap into that for yourself, I mean, I think that's, that's and a it's really not amazing stuff that you've heard anywhere else. These are things that most people don't talk about. And, you know, I don't know why it's, it's, it's maybe because everything else is like the baseline. This is like kind of the next level. Sure. No, no, no. And, and I'm going to make sure to grab a copy myself. I'll link it in the comment section or in the show notes or around here. Um, last question here for you, Dan. The, the show itself, it's called The Inner Change Maker. I'm always curious, what comes to your mind when, when you hear somebody being a change maker? I, I mean, I think, I think they're willing to push against the world. I mean, the world doesn't want to change. Like, that's the truth. Mm. It's like, you know, when people build businesses, they're like, why is it so hard? It's like, nobody wants to change. They don't wake up and go, I'm changing everything. I yeah. want to change the way I, I get my work done. I want to change the way I drive. Like, nobody wants to change anything. So if you want to push on the world, then you're a change maker. And I think that's true from community, nonprofits, artistry, um, you know, movements and yeah. business. That's, that's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Dan, I, I really appreciate not the time, but I appreciate the wisdom that you shared and the perspective, man. And cool. uh, we'll, we'll definitely have to have you on at a later point. Appreciate it. All right, Jay. Brother. Thanks again, man. Appreciate it. Uh, everybody hit me up on my Twitter. Yeah, make sure to go website. follow him, Dan Martell. This guy is ripping it, and you guys need to be getting some of that wisdom so you can cool. be living like Dan. All right, Jay. Talk soon, man. Bye. 